Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the new podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal Clash of Souls. I'm your host, The Man Goose. Joining me, as always, you all know him, you all love him, you all want some more of him from the beautiful, mile-high, windy city of brotherly love, it's Jelly Knees! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Every week, these just get higher and higher amped up. By the time the game comes out, I'm going to be some, like, mythical creature. It's going to be great. <laughs> oh, man. Mangoose, the intro is always top-notch. Uh, but with us this week, we have Yuji Dark, who is in charge of music for the game, or maybe, uh, at least a section of it. And, Dark, go ahead and just tell us, like, what you work on primarily um, and what your day-to-day looks like with Ethereal. Um, Yeah, so with uh, Ethereal, I write for the lore department and I run the music department, um, you know, working with several different composers and making sure that they're on assignments that fit them best and you know, making sure that the game's music just blows you away, Um, you know, because, you know, music in games is important to me, and having the right feeling in in the game matters. Um, So, yeah, I I like to make sure that the music definitely holds up to as good as this game is going to be. Right on, man. That's awesome. Good to hear. I'm I'm really excited to talk to you about this. Music is incredibly important, I think, to any game. I mean, you just uh, a lot of you know a lot of us are are old Paragon refugees. You just hear adrenaline, the 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 old the old Paragon music, just a hint of it, and it just brings back memories. And that just shows you how important music is to a game. But before we get into talking to music with Lord Dark, what we're going to do is uh, there was a new uh, development th- fun fact along with a blog, and it was about the jungle objectives. Uh, Jelly, you want to talk about these jungle objectives we got to see? I would love to. As a jungle main, this was the post <laughs> that I've been waiting for. I've been sitting there like, okay, yeah, these are cool, but I want jungle he- myths and I want jungle information. That's all I care about. And we got it because they gave a ton of information about this. So it starts out with a gif of two wyverns and a tropos being the larger scale neutral objectives on the map. Um, and both of them, the both wyverns, it looks like an ice wyvern and a fire wyvern have their own cave or something that they're in, some kind of structure that they're in, which looks incredible. And then a tropos has this giant cavern looking thing and it's it all of it looks really good the they look like they've got diverse attacks and a a mix of different things that we'll have to work our way around in order to kill them and get their their buff or whatever it's going to be they didn't go into too much detail about what specifics you would get from killing each of these objectives but they did go into just kind of general info about the jungle and those uh neutral boss monsters um, so we there's 18 camps scattered around the jungle, which is a huge number. Um, and I'm I'm curious if that's 18 per side or if that's just 18 total on the entire map. Yeah, I didn't but think of that. that. Say again. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Um, there some of them are going to give you buffs, so we're I assume we're going to have uh the the standard buffs that you would see in MOBA genre, so red and blue buff, which they talk about later. But they also mention a purple and a green buff, which will be really interesting to see what those are and how you're able to acquire those. Green buff reminds me of Paragon, of course, getting that shield, but it also could be a health regen. We did see those green buffs in the Extra Life event, Mm -hmm. so maybe that's that asset just ported over there. But we don't know for sure. In purple buff, they don't give us any indication about what that could do. Um, But it's it looks like it's going to be a really impactful jungle that has a lot of different options with different things you can do for your team or for yourself as the jungler. I can't wait. I'm so stoked to get in there and find pathing and do the most optimal routes all the way through and all that kind of stuff. What did you think, Mangoose? Oh, it it, it all looked really amazing. Um, One of the things from way, way, way back is they talked about they were taking some influence from Dark Souls, and the only way I could think of that they could have souls like combat in the game would be with the jungle minions. And I I think that's 
if you watch them, and they did, they did indicate to us that, um, especially Atropos's abilities are um, kind of placeholder right now. They may not that those the what you see may not make it into the game uh, final mm-hmm. product, but it does look like a lot of stuff that you can dodge, and um, it'll be a lot more skill based jungling than just sitting there get beating on minions while they beat on you until you finally kill them and and move on. So you'll actually have to employ a little bit of skill in the jungle. Uh, Dark, you want to weigh in on this at all? So as far as anything along those lines go, um, with actual gameplay or GDA stuff, probably won't weigh in too much. But <laughs> I will definitely say that, um, yeah, I'm super excited for it. I mean, being someone who uh, worked on it and um, as much as ethereal means to me, you know, it uh, it definitely... I, I'm just excited as every other fan out there. So, And before you were telling us, Dark, that you were also part of the lore team originally, um, and how were you involved in any of the, the lore behind these Wyverns or Atropos or anything like that, or anything you can share with us at the very least? Um, no. So I actually was not involved with any of that lore. Um, so since... Since I joined, um, I've worked on Auron. Uh, Zero was one of mine. Um, oh, so mind you, lore. Lore, though. That, that's a pretty important distinction. Lore-wise, they were mine. Um, those characters were designed before I ever joined the team. Um, but I, I handled writing their lore. And then... Um, um, Malaya... Marina, Talos, like, I've worked on all of their lore, but, uh, for the most part, I I help out with that stuff. The only two characters that I've actually written the lore for were Aron and Zero for now. Right on. Um, it's kind of, kind of cool that you, you work on both sides of that, so you get a better feel, I would think you would have a better feel of what their music should sound like and, and feel like mm-hmm. for the different situations and, or, and whatnot. And um, leading into that, let's, uh, let, let, let's move straight into to talking about music. And uh, Dark brought us a fun little thing. Um, we already listened to it. Uh, we're going to play it for you right now. I'm just going to go full screen with this so that you guys can, uh, can, can, can fully enjoy it. If you want to watch our initial reactions to it, It'll be at the end, but uh, Dark, once you set it up, what did you bring for us? So, I got permission to bring you guys the Dante theme, uh, because all the characters are going to have themes for the character. So, I got permission for you guys to listen to the theme song for Dante. Alright guys, enjoy the theme song for Dante, and we'll be right back. Dante style.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We, uh, it blew us away. It was not what we were expecting at all, and it was absolutely amazing. I was expecting something a little more fantasy driven, and it was just, it was not that. <laughs> so, Dark, can, uh, what can you tell us about the Dante theme music here? So, for Dante, um, definitely it was the right approach. You know, when you think about uh, it was kind of what you were saying earlier when you said it was kind of a good idea to have someone who was already involved with lore and writing to step in and take up the mantle to, you know, help music move along um, for the same exact reason you were saying. Like, music-wise, you want each song, especially character themes. You know, you want that to 100% fit that character's vibe and for me it's that important um like i'm just just gonna say like badass moment you know like when you see someone walking in slow motion to their theme and you're like that that's that you know you just know that that song was made for that person you know and and that's what we try and do with every character like can you see that person walking to that music? Can you see them completely annihilating waves of minions to that music, you know? Um, and or could just, you know, even just walking is fine too in some cases. But, you know, it definitely needs to feel like it fits. And so all the music kind of comes from that place where we kind of like really go in depth with making sure that if you get put on assignment for that character, you know that character's lore, you know? So if I assign a character to any of my team, I go through and we make sure that they fully know the lore for that character and that their inspiration is being directly derived from what they know about that character. And then furthermore after they come up with a rendition for the song, um, I'll still go back, listen to it, and make sure that, from my expertise with the lore department, that it fits to me. And I I make sure that any tweaks that need to be made are made, so that way, you know, by the time you're getting the song, it, it's definitely not a, uh, it's not a one try. You know, it, it's <laughs> yeah. like we've, we've been through multiple renditions until we get it to a point where just like you guys and your reaction to it when you first heard it, like we all smile the same way listening to each other's music after we write it, you know, um, it's the same, like, um, I, I'd say like, honestly, the, the Aron theme was one of the ones that was super important to me, you know, cause Yep. Okay. So to ju- <laughs> I'm going to try and stick away from saying anything. So <laughs> in general, in general, just who Aron is, I needed a perfect track for that, you know? And so if you were to go listen to the Aron track after this, which of course I can't let you, but one <laughs> day, <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, It's a completely different vibe, completely different composer, completely different elements, you know, it's, um, it's going to be a completely different feeling. So, you know, you're getting this barrage of music that's all going to make you feel different. And if it should make you feel sad, then I'm going to make sure that you feel sad. (laughs) If it's supposed to make you feel excited, I'm going to make sure it makes you feel excited. You know, it, uh. I I want it to hold that weight for everyone, um, you know, because I know when I play video games and I hear certain tracks, I mean, I mean, come on, everyone has that one video game that made them cry. I'm mm-hmm. just saying, like, everybody has that one moment in video game history where you got completely destroyed <laughs> by a scene and, you know, behind every good scene of a video game or movie is a soundtrack that just completely took your soul and rearranged it. <laughs> so that's, be prepared. that's super awesome. And so I, I do think I speak for the entire community after listening to that uh, Dante theme that you showed us uh, are, are on track when 
<laughs> Soon uh, to you. Yeah, exactly. No, but I listening to the Dante theme, it felt there was never a moment listening to it that I was like, oh no, that's not Dante. Like that wasn't something I could see Dante listening to or saying. Like, and I love the little blurbs of Dante's voice lines in the middle of yeah. it. They just felt so Dante, for lack of a better way to put it. Like it just it was so brilliant. And I can't wait to hear the rest of it, the others, the other themes or future themes or the games theme, even things like that. Like, I'm just so excited after hearing that now. I just, it's incredible. It completely took me by surprise because I was so used to the sort of high fantasy that we've heard so far, like in the, uh, in the demo and stuff like that. And then this was just completely out of left field, took me totally by surprise. And you mentioned that you have like several, several composers of very different backgrounds um, do you compose any of the music yourself, Dark, or do you just um, collaborate and, like, produce it? Yeah, so unfortunately, I don't get to, you know, actually create any of it myself. And that's not for the fact of me not knowing music. I just don't have a proper studio set up. Um, but if I did, I very well would compose plenty of the music because, honestly... Um, I've always loved music. Music has is, is been in my life for a long time, and um, that that's part of the reason that I strive so hard to take the position in the first place and, you know, really make the music department what it is because, you know, it, like I said, it, it is really important to me. But um, back to the question in general. Yeah, no, I do mostly just produce. Um, so they they give me... Uh, okay, so basically, if we were to start fresh, like I said, I would take the song, the, or take the character, if you will, or whatever we need, and I know my team, I, I know where their strengths are, I know what their weaknesses are, and I take those, and I say, okay, who would be best to do this? And then I hand it to that person, and like I said earlier, I make sure that they're familiar with the lore in the case of... Um, uh, in in the case of character themes, anyway, um, when it comes to the other stuff, we play around with like other things um, and making sure that like that we have good like examples and ideas for what we want to move forward with. Uh, inspirations, good good inspiration for like the way we want to go about it. But in the case of character themes, I would hand them the character. Then I'd, you know, make sure that they know the lore. And then after that, I normally say, all right, like, for example, like this character. Let me think. Uh, so this is an example. I'm, I'm not particularly aiming towards any character. But, for example, if the character had to do with fire, right, I would want elements of fire in there. You know, I'd want you to hear maybe, like, the sound of wood cracking while being burned. Or, or you know, just, just something that makes you feel like there's fire around you, you know. And I, I would take elements like that, or, or even pieces from their past, you know. And, and we'd find a way to, like, kind of weave that in to what we're already doing. And so I give them that bit of advice, and then I let them go. And I let them go, come back with, you know, whatever they can give me. And then after I give it another listen, I critique it through that. And whatever I feel like it's missing from there, like whether or not maybe they happen to add like a violin in there and the violin's pitch is too high, you know, I'd be like, all right, maybe let's change the tempo and let's go ahead and just drop that down a couple octaves you know, and, and see how we feel about that. And then they'll go ahead, they'll make the next rendition, and they'll hit it at me again. And if it works, then great. And if it doesn't work, then, then we keep going back to the drawing board until we find that perfect combination. So it's, it's a lot of, you know, going back and forth on the processing like that. Uh, and, and yeah, so that's, I, I do a lot of, like critiquing essentially, but yeah. So you're actually 
a lot as you're talking you're covering a lot of the questions that i that i already gonna... had for you but uh <laughs> um one of the things i wanted to know so we we've established how important um, music is for games what are some of your favorite scores from past games that you've played <laughs> so two that came to mind right away pretty easily because they're honestly probably my two favorite soundtracks and uh i don't know if i could honestly even tell you which one i would pick above the other but um I've, kingdom hearts will always have like a, a special oh, yeah. place the kingdom hearts soundtrack like you know i still have those songs on my spotify and listen to them almost every day so <laughs> you know the the soundtrack is good but other than that Detroit Become Human. That oh, yeah. was probably wow. like that's honestly it's one of my all time favorite games. Blew my blew my mind. And like I've played that game so many times for like, you know, it's it's funny because I have a YouTube channel and like a game on my YouTube channel and I've played it several times on live stream. And I mean, luckily people didn't get sick of it, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, choice games, of course, when you get to make your own choices throughout the game, you can change the way the story plays out. So right. it makes for good, content. but without the content, it's just so many, so many good feelings created from the soundtrack of that game. So, so it's kind of hard. Cause like I said, while Kingdom Hearts holds a special place in my heart, like, Detroit Become Human was just absolutely breathtaking. What about you, Jelly? You got any? Uh, the one that comes to mind for me that I remember sitting there, and it's kind of like like uh, Dark was saying that there's there's two actually that it'd be hard to pick between the two. Um, Destiny Two, the main the original story soundtrack. I don't know what it was, but I just sat there at pretty much every mission and going like, dang, like the soundtrack helps amplify this moment to the next level. And I think that's where music and games should go. Would dependent on the feeling that they're trying to accomplish in that scene, the music should help amplify that, not take away from it or not just be there either. I feel like there are so many games that yeah, there's music. You don't recognize it, you don't remember it, you don't do anything like that. But when a game has music that you remember, that sticks out so much more in that scene or in that part of the game, whatever it may be. So Destiny 2 or uh the PS4 Spider-Man game, uh, same kind of thing, is that it just amplified moments for me that I just got so lost in it between the music yeah. and the scene itself that it was just incredible. Yeah, Mangus, anything come to mind for you? Uh, Grease, definitely Grease. Um, not the musical, like, like <laughs> G-R-I-S, the game Grease. I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys have ever played it, but it is an absolute... If I, if I was to ever call any game a work of art, it is an actual work of art. Like, it is an emotional journey If when you play that game. It's just like a 2D side-scrolling puzzle platformer. But if you ever played it, you know what exactly what I'm talking about. But the music really blended in with the rest of what they had going with Grease to make that uh, truly memorable experience overall. And, um, yeah, I just it's kind of weird that... Music seems like one of those things that people just wouldn't care about or wouldn't notice, but you, man, you really do notice when the music for something is really good. When we when we did that play test and I started to hear that music as we were coming mm -hmm. to the login screen, I was like, "Fuck yeah! Like this is good. This is good <laughs> shit." Yeah, and when uh, you and I were trying to get footage for the after the play test to put on Enter the Ether and all that, you and I talked about the the music in the background and like just how fitting it was. Or the theme we were in, it just—it right. was incredible. So, but you guys heard it here first. Mangoose is secretly a huge Grease the Musical fan, <laughs> right? So Honestly, that's where my mind went to, and the first thought <laughs> I had was, "Oh, we get to pick movies too." Is that, that Olivia like, Newton-John, man? <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to yeah, love no. Yeah, no. I love Destiny, though. That—that's another one. That's—that's that's a good point. I'm like a huge Destiny fan, and I. I've been playing for a long time. Um, I definitely slowed down more recently because obviously my time is pretty occupied. But <laughs> nevertheless, I uh, I definitely love Destiny. Though I will say, if I had to pick any Destiny time, 
it would have been Destiny 1 during Taken King easy because oh, yes. Oryx music was pinnacle of of what I want to hear. And I, I will say, definitely inspiration was drawn there too. So it, like the Taken King music for Oryx, like just opening up the login screen after, you know, all that, or even the one for Oryx's trailer, which was just phenomenal. You know, it, it's definitely one of the uh, the better soundtracks for, you know, video game. And I think that kind of proves the point of what we've, what we've been talking about, is hearing each of us talk about our, our favorite soundtracks from video games. I think we each had that that glimmer right it was the thing of like you can pick out a specific yeah. moment that the music was so impactful that you sat there and you can you can remember that moment you remember the feeling like i'm getting chills just talking about it like it's just it's one of those things that i think is so subtle but ha could have such a huge impact in and of itself um towards that end though i do want to ask you since we know about themes being a thing for each myth is there one that is that you guys have done already that was particularly harder than the others or was just more complicated? Like, can you get into any of that? Somewhat. Um, I, I don't know if I could get into the why, but <laughs> I definitely will say that Aron for me, Aron is probably one of the myths that is a bit harder because I have, there, there's like a specific idea of what needs to be achieved with Aron, you know, based off of his lore, based off of, you know, Zero's lore, just the lore in general. Um, it demands a lot of Aron's song, and, and it needs to be to the extent where it definitely... There's a lot of emotion that I want to be able, and I'm not going to say which emotions, but there's a lot of emotion <laughs> that I definitely want to make sure is felt through that song. So for me, character theme-wise, anyway, because you did only say character theme-wise. <laughs> oh, man. That, <laughs> that, that would be the hardest character theme. But with that said, because I'm sure what your next question could be, <laughs> The the only other one that I'd say would be even, well, actually, why it's, it's been harder, would be the uh, cinematic song. The, okay. The, uh, the, the track that we plan on using for the cinematic is definitely the, it's definitely the hardest one. On that one because... has to leave a lasting impression, too. Mm -hmm. exactly and that's why because it needs to be it needs to hit so much you know it definitely has like a very high pedestal and i know you mentioned white sand before so i mean i know that you know uh, about that um and and yeah we're, we've worked very hard <laughs> to achieve a very good cinematic song um so that is definitely the hardest track that I've ever had to do for this. Um, That's awesome. I was going to ask you who your favorite myth was and who you plan to play, but I think I have an idea <laughs> of who that might See, be by now. You might, you might, <laughs> but with that said, it, um, funny enough, uh, so I have a very specific play style, right? You know, especially being a MOBA player, being you know, an ex-Paragon player, and being a Smite player. Um, I have a very specific thing that I go for when I game. And uh, as much as obviously, I'm sure you were thinking the answers are on, because <laughs> obviously, you know, I have him everywhere. <laughs> but... uh nevertheless i'd say it's probably zero that i'm gonna end up oh, okay that's right because on. for me for me i think the sky slayer thing is definitely more my vibe um but nevertheless aron holds a special place in my heart he was the first myth i was ever handed so um 
I definitely am going to play several games as him at some point. Right on. Jilly, what else you got? Any questions? I mean, so now that you say that you have a very specific play style and that Zero fits that play style and that that's who you're going to play, what are Zero's abilities? Because, uh, or I guess I should say, that I, I know you can't answer that. So let me, I'll, 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 I'll retract that. I won't even try to, to get that out of you. But what's your play style? That's not a th an ethereal question. That's just a dark question. Just hypothetically, what's your play style? Fair enough. So, so okay. So, so I also have to retract part of my statement. Then, <laughs> it's not just my play style in Thank general, <laughs> just just style wise as well. So, like for example, one of my favorite characters in Smite is Thanatos. So, the uh, the fl the you know the whole wings and and like you know death aspect of it with like being able to float around and stuff you know not saying anything about zero just in general saying like, just the aesthetic the general aesthetic of that exactly exactly it started as aesthetic and then it was like no i actually really do love jungle and i found that honestly i myself do tend to play jungle more often um so as far as you know This is a hard question to answer. <laughs> no, you're fine. I, can. I can't get into uh, certain things. But you, I mean, but let's... this is an enter the ether exclusive. Zero's gonna have wings, and he's gonna kill people. We did it. <laughs> we figured it out, Mangoose. Congratulations. Exactly. We've done knew it. that before. <laughs> yeah, you never would have known that without me ever. <laughs> but no, never. Nevertheless, the wings, the the wings are, um, they they're definitely a fun aspect as far as style goes. Um, and honestly, I'm not going to lie, when I first pick up a game, I do pick my player based on style. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> and then then there are times like where I sit there and I'm like, oh, God, this is a bad decision. This, this character <laughs> might, like, well, like, with Smite, there's plenty of characters that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's definitely, oh, I think, okay. Um, it was Hades back in the day i think hades was like the first one i ever picked up and i was like yeah he looks like a badass but i'm gonna <laughs> love hades and then it's like no no i'm not enjoying <laughs> and, and so so uh hades did not fit my playing style like um, yeah so after after a lot of experimentation then it was like oh thanatos actually looks really awesome you know that was, of course, after I bought all the characters. But, you know, <laughs> it, uh, I, I thought he looked really cool. And then I was like, okay, he also has OP abilities. But it always starts with looks. And then it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. the abilities also work. Um, but, yeah, nevertheless, yeah, I think that both Zero and R in general are probably going to be the two that I lean more toward at first. And then, uh, who knows? I mean. <laughs> there there yeah. are true you never know i mean i i help develop certain aspects of the game and i still might change my mind later <laughs> like you never know who you're gonna end up playing until you actually get a feel for it and might like someone else better so um, and it, but definitely... it even goes into the future with that same element of we really only know about 14 ish myths for ethereal right now but it's assumed that there there's going to be many more, right? So what if you really think zero is your aesthetic and then somebody new comes out and you're like, no, actually, that one over there, yeah, that that's more me, and you switch over to that one. Like it's that's I think part of the exciting thing for me about Ethereal is the the newness of it all, but also just the potential at the same time. And hearing people like you talk about just the themes and music behind it all shows the kind of work and dedication that's going into ethereal and the attention to and detail. that yeah 100 percent. oh yeah and, and i will say that's that's spot on like we i mean the whole team i because uh, of course talking to me i mean i am t like someone who is a part of two different teams you know and as a part of both of those teams like they're both highly driven on 
the attention to detail aspect and making sure that, you know, and of course, I'm not saying anything about the other departments because the other departments are just the same exact way. Like they're all very detail oriented and making sure that everything is as amazing as it should be, you know, and and, uh, (laughs) seen a couple of your your previous episodes and it's like highly ambitious is a word that you like to use yep. <laughs> but uh but nevertheless i'd prefer to be highly ambitious yeah you because know, i think that a serial okay let me state in my opinion a serial <laughs> is definitely you know it's a cornerstone it's definitely mm-hmm what attracted it to me in the first place. Um, you know, as, as an ex Paragon player, when I first heard of the company and the very first, you know, the very first thing I heard about it, like, you know, the, the YouTube videos I watched back then. And, you know, the, the, this was a long time ago, but you know, back then the, the very first videos I ever watched, I was like, this, this is going to be that next level MOBA that is just completely different from anything we've ever seen before. And I I got obsessed with it, you know, and I followed them on everything, you know, and that's how I made it onto the team in the first place, you know, followed them on everything. And the moment I got my shot to try and join the team, I did everything in my power to make myself, you know, and Mm -hmm. I'm super happy I did it because honestly, I never in a million years would have figured that I would have landed this, you know, position to be working on a game that I absolutely, like, already adored the company without even meeting any of the amazing team that we have on this company. Um, but now, having met everyone working on the game, like, it, it, it really is like a dream come true. You know, it, it definitely, going from where I was before to actually working on a video game and creating what we're creating. It definitely is a very strong feeling. So I'm going to make sure that everyone feels the power of my feelings through that. Right on, man. That's a a noble goal. Yeah, absolutely. I think think that's why so many Paragoners have kind of transitioned to ethereal is not because it's using any of the assets like the para zombies, but it's Paragon tried to be that that trailblazer just a little bit further outside the MOBA genre and do their own thing a little bit. And I think that enticed a lot of people. And I think we all see that in ethereal at the same time of that that ambition, the trailblazing, all the new things that they want to do and 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 are excited for that in and of itself, in addition to all the work that you guys are doing to make it wonderful, like the themes and the art and all of those things. So I can't wait to everybody's hear more so of your stuff. To, to, to re, everybody's so excited to rewalk that same path. But with mm-hmm. Ethereal, we've got a brand new path to, to, to walk on. So I don't, and it's further down the road already laid out for us by Paragon. So I think that's, I think that's why we're all, all about undying games and Ethereal, man. That was well mm-hmm. said, Jelly. Well said. I, I do. I, we are going to have to wrap it up, though. I think we've gone. Yeah, we've gone <laughs> <laughs> pretty long here. Um, uh, Dark. Uh, any final comments? Anything you got? You, you want to say to the fans out there? Honestly, uh, we're super excited to bring this game to you, to you know all of the fans out there, everyone who's been waiting patiently. And uh, just know that it is in good hands and we are absolutely striving forward to make the best possible game that we can. I I know that we're going to succeed. In- Jill, anything final? So, I mean, I guess I just have one final question just to kind of, I guess, sum it all up. Um, that Between Dante's theme and what you explained about Iran's theme and you wanting it to be perfect... And just going into the details of what goes in with the other the composers and coming back to you and all the revisions and everything. When does Ethereal come out? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even see that one coming. 
<laughs> you got I me did. on that one. I did. No, like you I saw, saw it coming one hundred and ten percent. Dark this whole time has been waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, great! That's great. <laughs> All right, so Dark, you said you had a YouTube channel. Um, uh, guys, check out his YouTube channel. I'll have it linked in the description below. Dark, if you can send me a link to your channel, that would be absolutely amazing. Anything else you want to plug? Oh no, that that's. That's it for now. Oh, I mean, we do have a TikTok now for Ethereal. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Yep. Already following. Same here. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> then then you guys already know that one. So, yeah, other than that, yeah, no, and I greatly appreciate the uh, shout out on the channel. I don't Jelly, anything you got the plug? Uh, this week, I went back through the Extra Life footage for the Q&A. And copied it all down. It's like two and a half hours of Q&A. So I went through it all. I'm going to be releasing a video covering all the questions we asked and what they answered to sometime this week. Probably the same day as this goes out. So look out for that on my YouTube channel. What about you, Mangoose? I'm looking forward to that because I don't remember everything that was said. (laughs) (laughs) I think this week, my project this week, I think I've literally forgotten more about Ethereal than most people know and i mean that literally i've actually forgotten it so i need to really go back through and separate things things that were shown to me in confidence that i can't show to anybody else and not talk about just put that over here things that were shown to me specifically for my channel but are allowed to be shown to everyone put that in a column here and then the shit that everybody else does like (laughs) i need to separate that out because i during this show it's very difficult for me not to release information that may not like the the wyverns i knew about those for a while i almost talked about them in one other episode and i'm glad they finally released those so that, Same. I, can, <laughs> so that I can say what they were but that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for this week folks it's a very interesting episode i knew as soon as we started talking to dark that it was going to be um very interesting dude thank you very much for coming out here and uh we do know that this is a very ambitious moba but uh with that high amount of ambition is a high amount of potential so i hope you can all join us as we enter the ether do you want to listen to this real quick goose so we can play it yes and then talk about it It's a little, it's a little, oh, oh. I was about to say bass drop, and then there really was a bass drop. (laughs) Ooh. This is pretty fucking badass. Dude. This feels like a, like a wrestling match intro that somebody's walking into. Really done it now. Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! This is like not what I was expecting, and it's awesome. <laughs> now. Dante style. That's amazing. Yeah. Are you done listening wow. to it, Jelly? Three seconds. 
Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Jelly, your new task, you gotta come up with a Dante dance. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. Mangoo.